Okay class, welcome back. In this unit, we'll be covering cardiac electrophysiology, um, which you can think of it basically as a physiology of the cardiac conduction system. Like we talked about in the first unit, you can think of the cardiac conduction system as basically the control system or the computer uh, that runs the mechanical uh, portion of the heart. Again, remember electrical events dictate mechanical events. We'll cover this concept of electrical mechanical coupling when we get later into this unit. But again, that's the general gist of the uh, cardiac conduction system. So a uh, quick review of the pathway for cardiac conduction or the uh, propagation of the cardiac action potential. So normally it will start in the SA node or senior arterial, um, ar senior arterial node, which is basically known as the SA node, which is a collection of the conductive cells um, they're located in the right atrium. Uh, they'll propagate down through, or the action potential through the internodal fibers, which connects the SA node to the AV node, uh, then to the AV node, which is site of major delay. And we'll get into the importance of that later on. The bundle of Hiss, the bundle branches, and then the Purkinje fibers, um, which are kind of embedded within the ventricles. So uh, the SA node, um, it's the dominant or primary pacemaker. It's super important to remember this. Um, you know, if the SA node is intact, you know, we've got a pretty well controlled, generally, conduction system. Um, this is accomplished because of this principle called overdrive suppression. Basically, the way you can think about it is, you know, if we have, you know, the, the highest or the conduction cells with the, with the fastest um, rate in a certain sense will block out pacemakers located elsewhere. Now, sometimes we can get latent pacemakers or ectopic pacemakers, which are areas of the conduction. Remember self-excitability, a few different areas which can, can produce action potentials, right? Self through self-excitation. If the SA node, which has the fastest discharge rate is doing its thing, you know, we're going to block out all that extra noise because everything will be in relative hyper or will be in hyperpolarization. So those signals can't get in. So the SA node is healthy. Overdrive suppression, again, the fastest discharge rate will block out any distracting or latent pacemakers um, or ectopic pacemakers that want to sometimes get into the conduction system or to spontaneously depolarize different cells like the atria or the ventricle. Um, again, uh, once, it's, it, once it conducts, it'll path, pass um, down um, into the AV node. Now, one thing to remember, again, latent pacemakers, we've got a few different areas located throughout the heart that can potentially drive the heart rate you know, um, in rhythm if the SA node fails, right? We've got, um, we'll go over some of them later on, but key thing to remember, these latent pacemakers aren't active, they don't really... They can't enter into the conduction system if the SA node is healthy. But if the SA node gets suppressed or damaged, which can happen in some conditions, or if there's a conduction block somewhere else, um, or if the firing rate somehow exceeds the rate of the SA node, they can make it into the conduction system and cause problems. And we'll learn more about that later on in cardiopalm when we start assessing the ECGs and different arrhythmias and dysrhythmias. So the next stop along our track um, will be no pun intended, the internodal and inter, uh, interatrial tracts. So the internodal tracts um, can connect basically the SA node to the AV node through three internodal tracts, the anterior, middle, and posterior tracts. Now, there are the interatrial tracts as well because, again, you know, the SA node will, you know, controls the conduction for the entire heart. And we talked about in the previous unit, the atria also have to, you know, conduct and contract to kick in that little bit of extra atrial kick into the ventricles. This is accomplished through the inter, um, interatrial tracts, um, often referred to as Bachmann's bundle. Basically, they are fibers from the anterior internodal tracts that run along the superior quadrant of um, the interatrial sulcus um, and spread impulses from the right atrium to the left atrium. Um, and again, this allows for coordinated beating of the atria for them to almost kind of beat simultaneously um, right and left. And that 
Again, we want coordinated pumping, and this is accomplished by the structure and function of these different elements of a cardiac conduction system. So again, internodal tracts connect SA node to the AV node. The inter arter inter arterial or inter sorry, inter atrial tracts inter atrial tracts connect right atria to left atria, and they're basically portions of the anterior internodal tract. And then we have the AV node. Now, the AV node is a site of major delay, right? This is not a bad thing. It's actually a really good thing. It slows down the impulses. This allows for completion of atrial emptying. Again, remembering the atria will conduct and contract and then kick that remaining volume into the ventricles. We have to give a little bit de a delay at the ventricles, right? For that to happen, so we cause a little bit of a, a little bit of a delay at that AV node. Now this is located in the the lower right atrium near the interarterial septum, kind of like located right around here. Um, sorry, right around here. That. Now, um, now, again, cytomajor delay allows for filling, you know, um, and then that atrial kick. Um, this is because we'll get into later on. The ventricles have a, a have a very fast conduction velocity. So if we didn't have a delay, they may pump before we get the atrial kick into the ventricles, and we could have you know, we won't have as efficient pumping as we would if there wasn't if there was a delay there from the AV nodes. Again, that allows for the conduction to slow down a little bit, to allow for more filling, and then the atrial kick. To allow the atria to complete their contraction before the ventricles contract. Um, it also has latent pacemaker cells, which are really more on the periphery of the AV node, um, called the junctional fibers, uh, that have a, a slightly slower inherent um, beating rate. Again, the SA node has a rate about 60 to 100, which makes sense because, like, a normal heart rate, 60 to 100, that's where that comes from. Um, but again, there are situations where the SA node may become damaged or diseased, um, and we can potentially rely sometimes on the junctional fibers as a latent pacemaker to control the heart heartbeat. Uh, so just a little bit of, of uh, you know kind of uh, summary of some of the the benefits of having that slower delay. Again, just looking at different velocities through um, the different parts of the heart. Again, the the, the ventricles will have the highest conduction velocity. Um, again, looking at the Purkinje fibers, about two to four meters per second relative to the, the atrial muscle and internodal pathways. So again, if we don't have that delay at the AV node, we could potentially have a situation that we get um, the ventricles contracting before they have, before the atria contract, and we lose a little bit of kick in coordinated pumping. So again, this conduction delay, right, at the AV node, allows for, again, coordinated pumping. That's really the, the true benefit of those fibers um, and in that delay. So again, it allows the atria to contract fully empty blood into the ventricles before ventricular contraction. Again, so we have optimal filling and pumping. And it also allows the AV node to serve as a gatekeeper of conduction, which is important for limiting the rate of ventricular stimulation, just in case potentially we have an abnormal pacemaker located somewhere in the atria, and we'll talk more about that. So again, the AV node is the gatekeeper to the ventricles, right? And that's important because the ventricles pump blood to the lungs, but they also pump blood to the rest of our body. We really wanna make sure whatever's coming through there is happening in a coordinated fashion. And the AV node, because of this gatekeeper function, allows this to happen. Uh, next, we'll move on to the, the, the bundle of Hiss um, and the Purkinje fiber. So the bundle of Hiss, again, resumes normal conduction of the impulses through the ventricles, right? They split up into right and left bundle branches. The right obviously go to the right ventricle. The left obviously go to the left <laughs> ventricle. Um, and they basically, you can think of it as an extension of the AV node that, um, branching into the ventricles. And then we have the Purkinje fibers, right? Which are basically what carry the signal the rest of the way into the ventricles themselves, into the muscle. Um, again, both of these can serve as latent pacemakers. Uh, the Purkinje fiber is beating roughly around 50 to 20 beats. Um, 
And again, really what these do is just propagate the, that last bit of the, the last part of the conduction pathway into the ventricles themselves, a calls depolarization. Um, important thing because of this anatomy and um, the ventricles, when they depolarize, they depolarize typically from inside out, so the deeper fibers to the epicardium. So the area closer toward the endocardium um, will you know, depolarize first and move its way up into the epicardium. This will make more sense when we start getting into uh, the ECG signal and what we look at when we look at an ECG, but just a little little key factor to remember here. So uh, that was a review of this, the basic anatomy and physiology of the cardiac conduction system. Next, we'll get into the um, electrical uh, impulse itself or the cardiac action potential and some of the physiological events that occur that allow that to happen. So uh, this was, again, the basics of electrophysiology. And next, we'll get into some, a little bit more specifics in terms of the cardiac action potential.